They say you oppose legalizing weed. That's not true. I know. <laughs> and, and, and look, I joke about it, half joking. Half my family's from Jamaica. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever smoked? I have. Okay. Like and I, and I inhale. I did, in, I did inhale. inhale. Did inhale. Okay. <laughs> well, one Jamaican had a big problem with that, how she stereotyped the fact that she's from Jamaica. Of course, I've smoked pot. And it's her dad. His name's Donald Harris. He's an economics professor at Stanford University. He said, my dear departed grandmothers, as well as my deceased parents, must be turning in their grave right now to see their family's name, reputation, and proud Jamaican identity being connected in any way, jokingly or not, with a fraudulent stereotype of a pot-smoking <clears throat> joy seeker and in the pursuit of identity politics. What's your reaction? All right, we're back with the Fox News Alert. Empire actor Jussie Smollett is now in police custody as of this morning. He reportedly turned himself in at 5.15 a.m. Chicago time after making a statement to police. His arrest comes hours after he was named an official suspect in the alleged hate crime attack against himself. Smollett is charged with making false statements to police. And if he's convicted, he could face three years behind bars, if not more, actually if they prove to be a federal crime. Right, uh, exactly. That's the question, is the, uh, the feds apparently are looking into the fact that uh, the threatening letter was sent through the mail. Meanwhile, a police news conference is expected to reveal more details. 10 a.m. Eastern time, we'll probably hear what was in the statement that he made. The actor will then head to court this afternoon at 1.30 for a bond hearing. Let's bring in Michelle Malkin, syndicated columnist and author. She joins us today from out in Colorado Springs. Michelle, a lot has been said about this case and the rush to judgment because so many people came out and were so supportive of him when he first told the story, which, as we now know, was not true. Right, it wasn't true. And in my experience of uh, reporting on hate crime hoaxes over the last 20 years, when you see one social justice huckster, you've seen them all. Uh, and I very early on called attention to some of the troubling contradictions, lapses, and complete nonsensical claims that were made three weeks ago. So I'm glad that all of the Johnny come latelys are finally now debunking this because it was clear from day one when this story, quote unquote, first broke in TMZ that it was a publicity stunt. And none of the claims that were filtered through TMZ initially made any sense. The idea that there were people in this liberal elite enclave in Chicago shouting at Jussie Smollett at two o'clock in the morning uh, when it was below low freezing as he was supposedly strolling around getting a sandwich didn't make sense. All of these questions were, were already swirling in the local media right. on January 29th, and it took this long for people to realize that, that uh, the whole thing was a scam. Why is that? Because people were afraid. They've been intimidated for so long um, into asking these common sense questions Not the because Chicago of cops. identity politics. Not the Chicago cops. They got to the bottom of it. They were relentless in doing it, and I'm sure other cases were starved because of it. Now, a lot of candidates quickly uh, ran to the defense uh, and expressed their outrage. Hey, even the president did. But Adam, uh, uh, we should call Adam Schiff, actually tweeted immediately saying this. I met Jesse Smollett at a pride parade in Los Angeles and have seen the passion and moral clarity of his activism firsthand. This week he was the victim of a horrific attack. We pray for your speedy recovery, Jesse, and reject this act of hatred and bigotry. Uh, he has deleted that since. Yes, a lot of people have. And of course, now people like Kamala Harris have been struck with sudden death syndrome. Ask her about the, the tweet that she wrote. Huh? Huh? Can't hear you. La, la, la. Can't hear you. Uh, and a lot of this, of course, falls on the media as well, which stoked the hysteria about it and is in, in large part responsible for uh, this culture of just knee jerk witch hunts. Um, you know, my question is who's going to be accountable here, at least with the rush to judgment on Covington? We now have lawsuits, but right. but where, where, where's the re, where, where's the, the recourse for um, all of the Trump supporters, of course, uh, who've been smeared by mm -hmm. this? Because now you've got Jesse Smollett's lawyers saying, oh, well, we need a presumption of innocence. Where's the presumption of innocence for people who support the president? You mentioned Kamala Harris. Do you remember this when she was interviewed on that radio show called The Breakfast Club? Watch this. They say you oppose legalizing weed. That's not true. I know. <laughs> and, and, and look, I joke about it, half joking. Half my family's from Jamaica. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever smoked? I have. Okay. Like and I, and I inhale. I did inhale. 
Well, one Jamaican had a big problem with that, how she stereotyped the fact that she's from Jamaica, of course I've smoked pot. And it's her dad. His name's Donald Harris. He's an economics professor at Stanford University. He said, my dear departed grandmothers, as well as my deceased parents, must be turning in their grave right now to see their family's name, reputation, and proud Jamaican identity being connected in any way, jokingly or not, with a fraudulent stereotype of a pot-smoking <clears throat> joy seeker and in the pursuit of identity politics. What's your reaction? Amen. I'd like to write in Donald Harris instead of Kamala. Uh, I mean, the, the, the pathetic pandering is so cringeworthy uh, from Kamala Harris that even her phone father is uh, throwing her under the bus after she threw him, him, her family under the bus. You know, this is a serious issue. And I, I have written about uh, my own, um, I, I guess, somewhat unorthodox views about medical marijuana in particular, and my own family's positive experience with it. It certainly doesn't help the cause of people who are trying to, you know, argue on, on behalf of things like that, to have somebody right. so flippant. And you've got mm. time traveler Kamala Harris, of course, who smoked pot while she was listening to music that hadn't even been made yet. Right, yeah, she, she's like a ninth, right, grader. She's no. a ninth grader trying to be one of the cool kids from the people that brought you Get Me a Beer, Elizabeth Warren. If there's one thing to learn from President Trump and even Bernie Sanders, be yourself. And then we'll decide if you're the right person for the job. Uh, she's pretending to be somebody she's not. Michelle, thanks so much. Yep. Thank you, Michelle. You bet. Take care, guys. By the way, we should point out uh, the campaign has had no comment yet on what her father said. Well, but they, I bet that's coming today. They will. They'll have to. All right. It is uh, 21 minutes before the top of the hour.